the opinion says that the Constitution requires a process other than the criminal justice system to formally accuse a sitting president of wrongdoing. Special counsel Robert Mueller finally spoke, summarizing exactly what his report concluded. Now, I'm going to show you a clip here, and it really doesn't say anything differently than what it says in the report, but here is Mueller saying it himself. And the reason why he had to come out and do this is because Trump's AG, William Barr, initially put out a summary that misconstrued what Mueller's findings were. So here is Mueller himself discussing exactly what his report concluded, and I'll break it all down afterwards. The order appointing me special counsel authorized us to investigate actions that could obstruct the investigation. And we conducted that investigation and we kept the office of the acting attorney general apprised of the progress of our work. And as set forth in the report after that investigation, if we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. We did not, however, make a determination as to whether the president did commit a crime. The introduction to the volume two of our report explains that decision. It explains that under long-standing department policy, a president cannot be charged with a federal crime while he is in office. That is unconstitutional. Even if the charge is kept under seal and hidden from public view, that too is prohibited. The special counsel's office is part of the Department of Justice, and by regulation, it was bound by that department policy. Charging the president with a crime was therefore not an option we could consider. The department's written opinion explaining the policy makes several important points that further informed our handling of the obstruction investigation. Those points are summarized in our report, and I will describe two of them for you. First, the opinion explicitly permits the investigation of a sitting president because it is important to preserve evidence while memories are fresh and documents available. Among other things, that evidence could be used if there were co-conspirators who could be charged now. And second, the opinion says that the Constitution requires a process other than the criminal justice system to formally accuse a sitting president of wrongdoing. All right. Mueller laid out the path for impeachment proceedings. Now, if you want to side with Nancy Pelosi and the failed Democratic leadership and not actually pushing for impeachment, then be my guest. But you are on the losing side of history. Let me lay out some of the quotes here from Mueller and break down exactly what he is saying here. So Mueller says, quote, if we had the confidence that that the president did not commit a crime, we would have said so. Saying that if if President Trump did not commit a crime, they would have said so. But in the report, it shows at least 10 counts of obstruction of justice. So why didn't so if, if if they didn't say that Trump did not commit a crime, then why didn't they say that Trump did commit a crime? Well, Mueller also breaks that down, saying, quote, under long-standing department policy, a president cannot be charged with a federal crime while in office. That is unconstitutional. Charging the president with a crime was not an option we could consider. So this is the reason that the Mueller report does not say explicitly that Trump committed a crime. They laid out the evidence for it, but they were not able to actually uh, charge him with the crime and say that he committed a crime because uh, in in the, uh, the mind of Mueller and his team, that would be unconstitutional. Mueller also goes on to say that, quote, the Constitution requires a process other than the criminal justice system to formally accuse a sitting president of wrongdoing. Now, that process that he is talking about means impeachment, impeachment proceedings. That is exactly what Mueller is talking about. He laid out the case for impeachment proceedings, and it's now on Congress to move forward with that. So again, if you are with Nancy Pelosi and the failed leadership here, uh, I mean, I I don't even understand (laughs) the reason you would be. It doesn't make any sense. 
Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic leadership have failed over the past eight years for a number of reasons, for not taking uh, a progressive policy, but also for not even fighting Republicans. I mean, here you have, if, if, the, if the shoe was on the other foot and this was a Democratic president, they would have been impeached <laughs> immediately. The, the proceedings would have started immediately. But the Democratic leadership is so incredibly weak. Now, let me give you some of the arguments that they're making and that other people are making against impeachment and how ridiculous these arguments are. So some people say, oh, well, we don't have the numbers uh, for Democrats to convict in the Senate. This is not about conviction. Uh, conviction. It, it's about holding a standard. It's about having a standard for president. If a president breaks the law, which he Trump has in multiple ways, not even just with the Mueller report, but also with the emoluments clause, if you have a president that breaks the law, there should be a standard. You should move for impeachment. The next uh, argument uh, that some people make, oh, it'll excite conservative voters. How dumb is this argument? Every presidential election, Republican voters come out regardless. What the Democratic Party has to actually do to win is excite their base, excite potential Democratic voters, excite non-voters, excite independents. And look, there are a lot of people out there that just are not that engaged in policy discussions and don't really care. Maybe their lives are fine, but that what they do know is that they hate this president. So there is no reason why you can't both push for progressive policy and also push for impeachment. That will appeal to the widest base of possible voters for Democratic voters to come out and vote in 2020. Again, these arguments are stupid. The last argument here. Uh, it's a media distraction. Going for impeachment is a media distraction. Yeah, because we all know the media is always so steeped in very deep policy discussions. Are you effing kidding me? I mean, th this idea, the media, the mass media is always going to be terrible. They are run by massive corporations that have their own interests. So this idea that, oh, well, I mean, our fantastic media, oh, MSNBC, CNN, oh, they're going to be so super engaged in impeachment that they won't be able to discuss Medicare for all. How often are they discussing Medicare for all or any progressive policy right now? They aren't. So again, there is absolutely no reason to not push for impeachment proceedings. Now, on the other side of that, on the, uh, so you have Nancy Pelosi not pushing for impeachment. On the other side, you have actual fighters, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, actually pushing for impeachment. So let me show you a clip here from Rashida Tlaib this past weekend on uh, NBC talking to Chuck Todd about why she supports impeachment. Look, this is not about the 2020 elections, about doing what's right now for our country. This is going to be a precedent that we set when we don't hold this president accountable to the rule of law and to the United States Constitution. Just look at the fact that currently over uh, a number of abuses of power, but the public's trust is at stake. And we can't sit back idly and think that we can just pass health care reform and all of these issues which are critically important. But at the same time, you have an administration that's not providing the information, not following through on subpoenas. It goes hand in hand. And I think we need to stop separating the fact that we're trying to change people's lives for the better. But we have an administration that continues to violate the United States Constitution. Did you know, Chuck? I mean, he has not complied with the United States Constitution when he took the oath of office by divesting in his businesses. Mm -hmm. So we have an upgraded version of pay to play. So when I'm at the on the ground right now in my district fighting against the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, T-Mobile is turning around spending $195,000 at the Trump Hotel in DC as, a, as again, an upgraded version of pay to play to get access to the most powerful uh, corridor to power in our country, yeah. the president's office. And so for me to fight back against Big Pharma, for many of my colleagues that came there to pass really important reforms that are needed, we can't do it when the president of the United States continues to lie to the American people, Why? continue to not follow through Con on subpoenas and give us the information that we need. So there you have it. And Tlaib didn't even uh, reference obstruction of justice. She talked about the emoluments clause and Trump's violation of that. So she mentioned uh, T-Mobile there, but also with the Saudis. So after Trump won the election, the Saudis bought up a bunch of hotel rooms in Trump Tower. What happened then months later? Saudi arms deal. Then later on, Khashoggi. And nothing happened because of that. So you have this administration with Trump making money 
off of these various through these various means and then working in their favor this is even this is just completely separate from the Mueller report i mean i don't understand why people are not in the streets pushing for the impeachment of donald trump if you are somebody on the left and you are siding with nancy pelosi here you are absolutely ridiculous